Good morning. Our dear Antiphon, your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the course of the night, Jacob arose, took his two wives, with the two maidservants and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had taken them across the stream and had brought over all his possessions, Jacob was left there alone. Then some man wrestled with him until the break of dawn. When the man saw that he could not prevail over him, he struck Jacob's hip at its socket so that the hip socket was wrenched as they wrestled. The man then said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. The man asked, What is your name? He answered, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be spoken of as Jacob, but as Israel, because you have contended with the divine and human beings and have prevailed. Jacob then asked him, Do tell me your name, please. He answered, why should you want to know my name? With that, he bade him farewell. Jacob named the place Peniel, because I have seen God face to face, he said, yet my life has been spared. At sunrise, as he left Peniel, Jacob limped along because of his hip. That is why, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the sciatic muscle that is on the hip socket inasmuch as Jacob's hip socket was struck at the sciatic muscle. The word of the Lord. In justice I shall behold your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. From you let my judgment come, your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night, though you try me with fire, you shall find no malice in me. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. I in justice shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out of the mute, out of the mute man spoke, the crowds were amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, he drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus heals the demoniac. And what we find is the criticism of the Pharisees who say that, well, he drives out demons by the prince of demons. And in this version of Matthew's gospel, Jesus offers, well, he offers no defense. He offers nothing. He just continues his work of the mission to continue to be compassionate towards people proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. And he goes about working his miracles and bringing people to know that, well, ultimately, that he himself is God's only son, the Redeemer, sent to save us from the power of sin and death. And yet he makes that observation that the harvest is abundant and the laborers are few. And I think traditionally we look at that and oftentimes think, well, well, we just we need more vocations. Well, that's well and true. The evangelists that Jesus is looking for are all of us gathered in this church today. We are to be that people who continue to bring the good news of Jesus to others in a simple way, just as Jesus did, in teaching with care and compassion his way in the world today. Not with the great defense of who we are and why it is that we do what we do, but just offering that true compassion of the Lord Jesus and his word to those who are suffering, who are in need of hope and who are looking for one in whom they can really truly place their trust. We, by the lives that we live, by the words of encouragement that we speak, can be that for so many people and give them and bring them to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. With one voice, <clears throat> with one voice, let us offer prayers to our merciful Father for the needs of our church and the world. For the church, may she be filled with spiritual gifts and graces. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected leaders, may Christ guide their hearts and minds in working to protect the dignity and right to life of all especially the unborn, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have been physically, financially, or otherwise affected by the pandemic, may the Lord fill them with his compassionate presence. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, 
Francesca Bloom. May they soon see the glory of the Lord and be met with great rejoicing. And for the intentions of this Mass, Jessica and Olivia Ball, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. We join in our vocation prayer. God, our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious. As we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. For the divine work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, <clears throat> we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the man who seeks refuge in him. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.